And so this is how we get to the first two speeches of the President Joe Biden re-election effort in 2024. Friday at Valley Forge in Pennsylvania and today at the Mother Emanuel AME Church in Charleston, South Carolina. The two kickoff speeches of his 2024 re-election campaign, speeches about our status as a democracy, the fight to establish ourselves as a democracy in the Revolutionary War, the fight to keep our democracy in the Civil War, the threat to end democracy today posed by the Republican Party and Trump. And I don't know, I don't have insider information, but I doubt this is the ground on which the Biden campaign hoped to be making its case for re-election. They have other things they want to talk about. Like Nancy Pelosi was just describing with Jen Psaki in her exclusive interview tonight. They want to talk about kitchen table issues, right? And they have a lot to talk about. The unemployment rate has been below 4%, below 4% for nearly two straight years. That means this is the best jobs market in America since the 1960s. Jobs numbers under President Joe Biden are better than every single year of job numbers under President Donald Trump, including the years that Trump says were the best economic years ever. Actually, no, Joe Biden's are better. The uninsured rate is the lowest in American history. For the last full quarter, we have numbers for the annual economic growth rate in this country was 5.2 percent, which is an impossibly high number. Remember when all the economists said there was going to be a recession in 2023? How about 5.2% annual growth rate instead? Prices are coming down, including gas prices. Wages are going up. Under Joe Biden, the United States is doing better than every single other major economy in the world since COVID. Fighting against Republicans every step of the way, Joe Biden has zeroed out or reduced student loan monthly payments for tens of millions of Americans with crushing student loan debt. I mean, you talk about a contrast with the Republican Party. Joe Biden has reduced or zeroed out student loan payments for tens of millions of Americans and has fought to do it for more. What's the Republican idea that Joe Biden would love to be running against on that subject? Well, hit it, Governor DeSantis. Let's hear from you. The reality is we've had a generation of students go deep into debt and some of them end up with degrees in things like zombie studies, which are just not making a difference. A lot of these degrees have not given people a pathway to success and it's caused them to be deep in debt. So what are you going to do about that? Student loans should be dischargeable in bankruptcy. First of all, you all majored in terrible things and so you deserve it. But also, you know, okay, if you've got terrible debt, behold the Republican plan for student debt. Declare bankruptcy, you guys. Hey, students, declare bankruptcy. That will set you up for success. That's how Republicans think you should deal with high student debt. You're not going to get any help from us. Just declare yourself bankrupt. Personally, the Biden campaign, I'm sure, would love to be running on that. In Iowa this week, ahead of the caucuses, one week from today, the Trump campaign has scheduled an event with Republican Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders. What is Sarah Huckabee Sanders famous for since she stopped being the Trump White House spokesperson? Well, as governor, she has distinguished herself by repealing child labor laws. Okay, because who among us doesn't think there isn't anything wrong with America that can't be fixed by chaining a few more children to the looms like we used to do in the good old days? The Biden campaign, I'm sure, would love to be running on issues like that. On the issue of abortion rights, as of tonight, we are seeing the first news reporting from The New Yorker about the first American woman who may have died in Texas because of the Republicans' abortion ban there. Her name was Yenny Glick. She was married. It was a high-risk pregnancy. Four outside experts who reviewed her medical file after her death have all concluded that when the life-threatening complications started in her high-risk pregnancy, had she been offered an abortion, it, quote, probably would have saved her life. She died. The United States Supreme Court, dominated by Republican appointees, has just allowed Republican-controlled Idaho state government to reinstate its new abortion ban, which threatens doctors with five years in prison if they perform an abortion in the case of a medical emergency threatening the health of a woman. They are letting that go into effect in Idaho while the court considers Idaho's overall abortion ban. 
The court is not going to consider that Idaho abortion ban, though, until April. <laughs> and the law will be in effect until then. So Idaho doctors will have at least a few months now when they will have to decide between prison, five years in prison, and trying to save patients literally in the emergency room. The Biden campaign, I'm sure, would appreciate running on heart-rending issues like that. But instead, they are having to run on heart-rending issues like this. Eventually, it culminated the, the, the long break, simmering break between he and myself in June of 2020 when he wanted to deploy active duty troops on the street of Washington, D.C., and, and suggested actually that we, we shoot American, um, uh, Americans in the streets. When he suggested that we shoot Americans in the streets. Trump's former defense secretary, Mark Esper. The differences between the Democratic Party and the Republican Party are myriad and important. In a two-party system, each party, by definition, is really important, even when the party is occasionally a hot mess. But once one of those two parties is knowingly picking the shoot Americans in the street option, the violent overthrow of the government option, the dictatorship on day one option, it is does get hard to talk about anything else. And so here we go. Iowa is a week from tonight. The Republican cause of their front-running candidate has already seen 1,200 people criminally charged, over 800 convicted or pled guilty, and their candidate himself facing 91 felonies. His Republican primary opponents, both Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis, say they will pardon him if they are elected. And this, by definition, will have to be the grounds on which the entire contest is fought this year. Not because of one man, but because this is one whole party that has picked this as their cause. So here we go. 2024, be there. We'll be wild.